I wasn't able to refill my water at the end of yesterday, so no porridge for me this morning. Um, I am having coffee, but breakfast is a sort of haphazard collection of peanut butter wraps, dried fruit, that kind of stuff. Um, crunchy peanut butter, crunchy peanut butter this time. None of that smooth nonsense like on the last trip. Um, I also overshot my mark yesterday by probably about 20 kilometers, um, finding somewhere to pitch. So it's all kind of thrown today's route out of whack a bit. I'm not sure where we're going to end up. We'll follow the hills, the Quantox for a while, then drop down, go over to Exmoor, see how far we get, I think. Um, I've not got any data here, so I don't know what the weather's going to do at the moment. It's looking rather lovely, as you can possibly see. Um, there's bits of sun peeping through the clouds, a little bit of a breeze. Couldn't ask for better, really, this time of year. So I'm going to finish my coffee, get the tent packed up, get the horses fed and watered, and get on the way. A trig point always seems like a central place to stop and take in the view and it is a pretty amazing view from here I have to say. Um, it's clearing up a little bit so you can see quite a long way. I think this is Black Hill. We've got the uh, Bristol Channel down there, Cardiff kind of off on the other side of the water, Bristol the way up there and down there I don't think you can probably see it there's what looks like a massive building site. That is the site of the Hinkley Point C nuclear power station. Incredibly controversial project going on at the moment. I believe projected to be the third most expensive structure ever created by humans when it's finished, if it ever gets finished. And a chap just cycled past and told me that the crane down there, which I don't know if you can see either, is apparently the biggest crane in Europe. So. That's exciting, isn't it? Love a good crane. Um, anyway, yeah, just stopped for some dates and a snack bar. We're heading off along this trail now, just following the hills for a little way before we drop down into the, the valley, the lowlands, and begin the climb up uh, onto Exmoor, probably sometime after lunch. Happy days, onwards. <laughs>
looks like there might be some less friendly skies up ahead, I think. And <clears throat> I'm not doing super well. I wasted a lot of time sitting by that little river after I filled my bottles up. Well, not a lot of time. I don't know, I was there for probably an hour. And it wasn't wasted, of course. It was very, very lovely. But it's after one now, and I've, I've not made that, <laughs> that many miles today. So I don't know if I'm going to make the beacon today. That might have to be a thing for tomorrow. Oh, I'm not really sure. I just stopped here to have a snack and take stock of the journey, all that kind of stuff. It's lovely riding this morning, much nicer than yesterday, much more varied, you know, in and out of bits of forest, much more kind of gravel and off-road and little lumpy sort of farm tracks and things. Much more my cup of tea. But yeah, you know, one of those days. Slow and steady wins the race. I'm sure I'll get there in the end, but... I think we're going that way, heading down into Monk Silver, and then we've got a couple of climbs and descents before Exmoor. So yeah, we shall just see how far we get. I will keep you posted as I pedal. See you at the next snack stop. little spot to stop for a late lunch, peanut butter wrap, the usual fare, banana, tunnock's caramel wafer. <clears throat> I love these things. Not such a fan of the tea cakes, but the wafers, the caramel jobs, ooh. If I was ever going to be sponsored by one brand, forget Surly, forget Big Agnes, tunnock's. If you're out there, a lifetime supply of uh, caramel wafers, um, I'll do anything. Um, doing all right, managed to avoid the rain. It's really windy now. I don't know, you could probably hear it. Um, but weirdly, it's blowing on my back. This is, this is unheard of for me. I'm not riding into a headwind. It's pushing me along. And I think there's a little stretch of downhill now. And then an up, and then a down, and then an up, and then a down. And that's kind of the flavor of things from here on in. I'm definitely not gonna make it up onto the moors today. Nah. My legs have been sending me um, very, very stern letters saying that they only want to do a couple more hours, probably. So, yeah, probably going to be another early pitch, I think. And, yeah, got plenty of water so I can cook up some nice food and, yeah, just sort of chill in the tent, which is something I like to do on a blustery evening. Uh, I still don't know if there is any rain coming in. Every time I check, I haven't got data up here. And sort of in and out of valleys and stuff it's not very good coverage um but yeah there might be some weather coming behind me so i'm gonna get going stop this blathering can't sit here talking about snack bars all day next stop camp probably see you there
So, a very modest day today. 40 kilometers, although my goodness, it felt like more for whatever reasons, I don't know. It was very nice though, good riding. Um, the rain held off mostly right until the very end. You can probably hear it now. The reason I'm filming this in my tent is because it's horrible out there. I don't want to go outside. Um, some people think that bike packers are all these kind of endurance crazy folk who thrive on hardship and suffering. Not me. Not me. I hugely dislike pitching a tent in the rain. I hugely dislike being damp and cold. That's not why I do this. Why do you do this? I hear you all asking. Quite honestly, at the moment, I'm not sure. I'll get back to you on that one, maybe in a future video. Um, what's happened today? I dropped my bottle in the river as I was going to refill my water earlier and very nearly lost it. It nearly washed away. Then as I was going to leave, I dropped my helmet in the same river and also very nearly lost that. Um, later on, I cycled about a kilometre with my helmet just balanced on my back rack because I forgot to put it back on. Fortunately, I noticed and didn't lose it. I tell you these things just in case there was any danger of you becoming too much in awe of my bikepacking might to remind you that, although it may not always be obvious, I am not a god. I, like you, am nearly mortal. And I sometimes drop my helmet in rivers. Uh, what else? Important bikepacking tip for anyone. Always remember, heed the advice of locals. I was, um, I was just sitting at the bottom of the last kind of big climb of the day looking at maps and a couple came past on gravel bikes and we got chatting and I showed them my route and the chap said, Great Scott, man, no! You won't survive that trail. It, it's, we know it as bike packers folly. It will devour you. Heavens above, what were you thinking? And he didn't say it like that because he wasn't a British Army general in the 1800s. But he did warn me off that trail and gave me a much better alternative, which turned out to be very lovely. He also warned me off the route that I had picked for tomorrow to climb up the Dunkery Beacon. And even as he was telling me about it, I remembered a ride that I did with Alan and Woody, who I'm going to visit on this trip, years and years and years ago. We came to Exmoor and we descended that route. And this was, I was on a full sus bike and it nearly killed me. It was just a gully full of rocks and not like gravel and grit, proper rocks and boulders for about two miles. So yeah, I'm definitely not going up that way. Um, he gave me an alternative, which he said was better, but would still probably involve some pushing. So, tomorrow, I'm gonna make a call. I'm gonna see what time I wake up. I'm gonna see how the legs are feeling. I'm gonna see what the weather is looking like. If all things are favorable, we'll climb the beacon. Otherwise, I might just skirt around the edge, to be honest, because I don't want to arrive at Woody's really late, just because the whole point of this trip is to go and visit them. And I don't want to turn up stinking, soaking, and covered in mud in the middle of the night and wake the children. Um, so yeah, that's about the size of it um, for today, I think. No catastrophes, no uh, whatever the opposite of catastrophes is. Just burbling in my tent, really, as always. These people scrolling up across the wall of my wonderful tent are fabulous. These are the folk who support me on a regular and recurring basis on Kofi. You are all not in my tent. I, I run out of... I run out of descriptive phrases. I am, I'm glad you're not here with me because it's horrible here and I'd rather you were somewhere comfortable, put it that way. Thank you very much for your kind support. It means the world to me. Rain's getting harder. Um, 
If anyone else would like to help support the channel, you can um, check out the Kofi page, link in the description. Check out my Etsy store, where you can buy little wooden spoons and beads and what have you that I might have made. Or hit the thanks button underneath this video. It all goes a long way. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. Hope you've had a wonderful time both watching this video and for the rest of the day. My pillow's fallen over, so I'm going. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye now.